Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody, welcome live from Chicago. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist, all things sports medicine, fitness, and wellness. Brought to you by Global School Wear, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity, LER Review Magazine, and MVP Magazine, UK Health Radio. We've got a great doubleheader today. Pitts Quatrone. Uh, this guy's a maverick performer of uh, music and music therapy with the ancient Australian instrument, the diggery do. He's joining me along with Leanne Stuber. She's a registered nurse. She's the director of lifelong learning at the Virtual Brain Health Center. Then the sports doctor's in with some Bob Guy to wisdom, some emails. Uh, first, the Pitts Quatron. Is it Quatron? Yes, it is, Dr. Bob Quatron. Got it right. Chris, give us some background on yourself and this uh, incredible ancient instrument. Well, uh, I've been, I grew up in the Philadelphia area in the 60s and 70s on rock and roll and funk in, in Motown and the Philly sound and psychedelic music, world music, and then uh, started playing in bands as a drummer. And eventually, the, I heard the instrument, the didgeridoo from Australia. It's the native instrument of Australia. And a lot of experts agree that it's the world's oldest musical instrument. So it came to me in the, the 1980s in, uh, in different movies, the Coca-Cola Kid and then the Crocodile Dundee series of movies. So I heard it in there, and I was like, oh, man, what is that instrument? It sounds so cool, and it's underneath everything, and it's really gluing everything together. And I found out that it's the didgeridoo from Australia. And the fact that that instrument would be involved um, in uh, uh, healing and in some aspects of uh, helping uh, in uh, all sorts of mental concerns. I, was, was that something that was part of its um, heritage and history? Well, you know, to, to get the correct sound to play the didgeridoo, the first health benefit is you must relax. So basically you're flapping your lips kind of like what a tuba player does, like... So in order to get that first sound, which is your foundation of sound on the instrument, you have to do that very slowly, very deliberately, intentionally. So it makes you relax right off the bat, slowing your breath rate those, down. Give, give, me a real, give me a relaxing note, uh, Fritz. Sure. Yeah, one second. Here we go. So that's in Australia, so how old, how, how ancient is this thing, is the well, thinking? Yeah, that's a great question. No one really knows exactly how old it is. There's guesses, and it's a wide range between 1,500 years, and some people say up to 40,000 years. So no one really knows exactly how old it is, but some dating processes have been done from illustrations of rock art in uh, Australia on cave walls and uh, boulder walls and uh, they've come up between 2000 and 40,000 years so it, it's it's a tricky question to answer yeah it would be you know it's, whether it was part of rituals or tribal um uh, yeah. scenarios and again on the sports doctor i've had various guests over the years that again using the term music therapy uh the idea, especially with mental health being the biggest issue uh, around the world in so many areas, and the, the fact of that there can be therapeutic value to music. Uh, we had a, a year and a half ago some experts on with the sound baths, different kinds of uh, chimes, other instruments, really, really designed to um, relax and reduce stress in an uh, individual 
Um, I know that you've gotten involved on that side of it also, besides performing and playing. I mean, you you played the instrument on um, uh, the Tonight Show uh, with uh, Jimmy Kimmel, didn't you? <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. I knew I'd get the channel wrong. <laughs> well, they're both Jimmys, and and then there's James yes. Corden, and it's like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, they. Uh, I featured one of my songs on the Tonight Show a couple years ago, and. And I didn't even know it was coming. I just, <laughs> I was watching TV and boom, he puts a picture of me on his desk and he starts talking about one of my songs and then they played it. It was, it completely blew my mind. So where did you come into the angle of also including, not necessarily as the main focus of what you do, but at, but including the therapeutic side where you did been some, uh, uh, instrumental uh, 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 thinking regarding whether it was sleep apnea, whether it was for the person playing it or the person listening to it. What piqued mm-hmm. your interest on that side of this instrument? Tits? Yeah, well, there's there's benefits for the player and the listener. And for the listener, it's the uh, the meditative, like you talked about, the sound bath uh, aspect. And I'm in a band called Sounds of Spirit, based in Maryland, where we do just that. We travel around and set up, and people come, and they lay down, and we play for two hours continuously. So that's like our version of the sound bath. But uh, the other aspect of playing the instrument, in 2005, there was a great uh, study that was published by the British Medical Journal, and they concluded that playing the didgeridoo drastically reduces or completely eliminates obstructive sleep apnea. That's interesting. Now, when you think about it, again, the fact that there's an obstruction phenomenon, mask, that whole uh, reaction of the body, and whether, you know, the using of the lungs and in order to play this instrument, that it would have that kind of a, that, that's not... Um, Oh, that's surprising when you would uh, when you would think about it. It's got it's. Got, I would imagine playing that before you go to bed. It's got to be uh, wearing the mask, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. And a lot of people come to me and they want to learn how to play. Who are they? Don't want to do the sleep the uh, CPAP machine. They want. They're looking for an alternative. And so, yeah, you you nailed it because. How it's been explained to me is with obstructive sleep apnea, muscles in the lower throat tend to collapse and obstruct the airway. And playing didgeridoo is very physical. So when you play the dig, especially the breathing technique called circular breathing, it's an internal workout for those muscles. So after playing for three or four months, and it's a commitment, after playing for three or four months, those muscles tend to get really nice and strong again and straight, and they no longer obstruct the airway. Now, you see, physically and medically, it makes it makes some decent sense. Everybody listening to The Sports Doctor, I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist. If you go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com, if you go over to radio shows, you go back years, uh, international guests, national guests, local guests, an endless array of topics. Listen to whatever you would like. If you go to newspaper articles and magazines, we got a lot of great articles, a lot of exciting stuff going on with MVP Parent Magazine and our upcoming through Chesapeake Films with Joe Franco, uh, the documentary Where Our Children Play, The Challenge of Youth Sports, uh, which is going to hit probably this summer or fall. We have thousands and thousands of followers on uh, Twitter as well as the LinkedIn. We have a lot of great information in these areas of sports medicine, fitness, and wellness. And if you go to uh, at sports doc, D-O-C radio, uh, talking uh, with Pitts uh, Catrone, and he's talking again about that uh, didgeridoo, this ancient, ancient in- instrument, uh, which has uh, a benefit. And again, you know, the, 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 what we mentioned initially, talking about you playing, uh, people relaxing, meditating, trying to reduce stress uh, is, is one of the most important aspects of um, the new medicine. Uh, the idea, again, of uh, people are so wound up, there's so much stress, it affects so many uh, different areas. What's the best website that people could find out about you and the instrument and uh, what you're about? 
Well, folks can go right to my my main website, and it's my name dot com, and it's it's a it's a funky one, so it's spelled P I T Z Q U A T T R O N E Pittsquatrone dot com, or if they want to search just uh, Didgeridoo Vermont or Pitts Dig, they'll find me. Yeah, and the uh, uh, you know the band and the uh, addition of this particular. Um, is this an, is it an expensive instrument, Pitt? Well, uh, not really. I mean, if you want to get started, most likely you'll have something around the house that you can get going on. The first thing you do is slap your lips like like that to get going, and then uh, basically the didgeridoo is a hollowed out tree branch, and any hollow tube can be a didgeridoo as long as it's it's at least three feet long. Whether it's the uh, holiday wrapping paper, the, the cardboard core inside that, or a plastic plumbing pipe, anything at least three feet long, usually four feet is actually a bit better and easier to play. Any hollow tube can be a didgeridoo, and then you need the diameter, the correct specs as well, about an inch and a quarter wide, four feet long, and Bang, you yeah, can what get started kid, on your what, own. Who, who, who can't imagine blowing through one of those tubes of wrapping paper, man, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> uh, with all of those different kinds of sounds? I think everybody can, uh, uh, can identify with that. How has the, um, in your experience, Tiff, you know, with the medical community, the uh, mm-hmm. psychological community, uh, uh, responded at all to the therapeutic side of uh, the, uh, the didgeridoo? Any? You know, it. Yeah, it it really depends on the mindset of the healthcare professional. You know, just like in any other field, you have the traditional folks, and then you have some folks who are a little bit more open-minded. And uh, I've worked with a lot of doctors. I've taught classes in in, doc- in doctors' lobbies <laughs> in their waiting room. So uh, yeah, real. And then on the other side of things, the the eastern side of things, like in acupuncture, I I. Uh, teach folks in acupuncture practices I'll have a didgeridoo class on say Thursday night and when there's uh, you know they have night hours for that so it's you know and again it's, it's a gigantic it's a gigantic topic I call yeah. it on the sports doctor uh pitch the mental game whether you're mm-hmm. the best athlete in the world whether you're their parents whether you're their coach whether you're involved in uh, all sorts of competitive Youth sports, with all the different pressures at all these different levels, uh, the ability, again, of reducing stress in order to enhance performance, let alone, mm-hmm. I would imagine, the again, breathing is such a big part of uh, performing any particular sport. I would imagine that that's, all, that's really exercising the whole breathing apparatus, isn't it? It really is. And, you know, sleep deprivation is a serious thing. An athlete suffering from sleep deprivation they're not going to play as well they're not as alert they're not going to be is running around as much it's fatigue becomes a problem and there was a guy on the red sox a few years ago tying in the sports uh, aspect of things mike napoli remember him on the red yes. sox in 2015 he had sleep apnea so bad he went with this extreme surgical procedure where they broke his upper and lower jaw to permanently readjust the position of his jaw to open up those airways. So this is, it's, it's, there's 18 million Americans that suffer from sleep apnea. And again, you know, the area, again, in sports, the sports performance, rest and recovery is a gigantic area. This is why sometimes, like you mentioned, the relationship Uh, We talk a lot of acupuncture. We talk a lot of holistic medicine, which many times, whether it's sound bath or music therapy, uh, art therapy, they they can can still fall into these categories compared to often, you know, the stringent Western medicine, which is give give them a pill, operate on them, or uh, 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 (laughs) uh, we could take uh, uh, more medication in in that regard. So uh, the uh, blending of Eastern and, and uh, Western medicine, and some of these non-drug-related alternatives to calm things down, to enhance rest and recovery, um, I would imagine that, that the uh, 
that that would be uh, well received. How have the, you know the audience? You played all around the world uh, and uh, whatever. Um, are you still doing a lot of traveling? Yeah, absolutely. A couple of weeks ago, I was in California. I did a, a five-day uh, residency at an elementary school in the Bay Area. and We make instruments with the kids, and I teach them how to play. We rehearse some songs at the end of the week. We put a performance on for the whole school yeah, and the community. I ought, to hook you up. I ought to hook you up with my friends with the International and National Kids Yoga Day, where, where they just, just passed in April. There's like 50 countries, tens of thousands of children you know, practicing yoga for the day. The idea, again, of physically and mentally reducing stress with these children and the earlier, uh, the better, and it uh, would, would fit right in. The kids probably loved it. Again, they, I knew the time would fly. To, uh, again, if they go to yourname.com, what's the best place to find out about you and, and the instrument? Well, right there at my website, pitsquatrone.com, P-I-T-Z-Q-U-A. It's P I T Z Q U A T T R O N E Pittsquatrone dot com or just search Great. for Dig or Pitts and you'll get me. Give me another note. You got another note before we go? Uh, hold on, Pitts. If you're done, give me a quick note. Sure. <laughs> ah, I knew we'd get him. Great. <laughs> The Sports Doctor, everybody. Listen closely. We'll be right back. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Everybody, welcome back. Live from Chicago, it is the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. We want to welcome Leanne Stuber. She is a registered nurse. She's the director of lifelong learning at the Virtual Brain Health Center. Leanne, welcome to the Sports Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Bob. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Leanne, let's get started with some background on yourself and the, um, the Brain Health Center. Sure. Um, I started out as a pediatric nurse, ended up spending 20 years on a senior living campus running all their lifelong learning programs. One where I met the other. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, <laughs> when we were in that uh, senior living place, that's where I met Dr. Crystal Color, my business partner. And we both had moved on. And when the pandemic hit, we were real concerned about seniors being isolated and losing all their great programming. And she called me and said, let's start a virtual brain health center. And I said, great. And that's what we did. You know, it's interesting, whether we're talking about, and we cover all these topics for decades on the sports, but whether we're talking about super high performance, whether we're talking about um, enhancing recovery, we were just talking a lot about reducing stress with my first uh, guest. The whole idea of mental health, it's the biggest topic in the world. Uh, then you would think that brain health uh, sounds like a great title, you know? Yeah, you know, our brain controls everything. So it doesn't matter what we're concerned about. We should be concerned about our brain because we need to keep our brain healthy for everything in our body to work correctly. So it should be top of everyone's mind, no pun intended. <laughs> um, I was brain just health. going to say, right, from, yeah, as a sports podiatrist, I could tell you from one end to the other, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, take a look at that. You know, the topic of concussions is huge in sports, youth sports, serious sports, especially over the past maybe five, ten years. It's even bigger today. Again, brain health. That yeah. whole side of things also uh, uh, falls in the middle of that whole category. 
Right. Uh, you know, any type of injury to the brain, whether it's a concussion, um, for older adults, it might be a fall where you hit your head. Um, we, we have to take care of our brain inside, from the inside and from the outside. It's so important, no matter how old you are. Crystal and I love to say brain health is for everyone. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are. We all have a brain and we all have to take care of it. I think, you know, people as we get older, and uh, the uh, senior population, the super senior population, like our uh, friend Rick Bava, uh, the baby boomer guy uh, mm-hmm. uh, who had uh, introduced us. And, you know, talking about all of these things on the sports doctor, we were talking about, you know, trying to stay healthy, trying to stay active. I call it the new medicine, Leanne, which is eat smarter, keep moving, and reduce stress. Uh, yeah. and try to work it in in one regard or another. How have you found the uh, cooperation uh, with the um, medical community and the, uh, the uh, senior community as far as um, paying a lot more attention to um, live active and vibrant lives, which is what you guys are really all about, right? Right. You know, since we formed during the pandemic, a lot of people have been so disconnected from their family practitioners, people were afraid to go to the doctor for that first year. And so what we have found is I don't think doctors have as much time right now to spend on those lifestyle factors with people. So they may tell them, you know, in passing, you need to improve your diet, you need to move more, but they don't get into any specifics. And that's what we like to do. We like to take all that scientific information and make it practical for people and help them with a plan so that they can start taking even small steps every day to improve some part of their life to improve their brain health. What are some of the bullet points that you want to get across to these audiences, uh, you know, to be, like you said, we want some, we want to plan. We want to pay attention to at least some sort of detail here uh, regarding uh, this. What are some of the things you want people to understand uh, are a big part of it? Yeah, well, you mentioned quite a few. Um, Physical movement is huge. Um, It doesn't have to be massive exercise. It can just be making a plan to sit less throughout the day and just be on your feet and just not sitting. That uh, You know, sitting is the new smoking, they say. So sitting is very bad for us. Great point, yes. Great point, which is to... You know, I mean, we're a big fan of walking, uh, and uh, again, there's so many different activities that people could find something they enjoy. Right. Uh, and again, you know, the 80s, the new 60, yeah. right, and 70s, the new 50. So with, with uh, uh, again, with the baby boomers wanting to stay healthier and, and more active, uh, and the uh, uh, idea of a paying attention to a plan would it include follow-up with your physical with your doctor. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, everybody, before you undertake any new big thing, whether it's physical activity, your diet, um, you should always check with your, your physician because you may be on a medicine or you may not be able to eat certain foods because of a medical condition. So it's real important to keep that health plan in line with your own doctor who knows your, your normal health baseline. Very important. And you, uh, part of your program, again, is, you know, these, these thinking programs, whether somebody's going to be paying attention for twice a day working a crossword puzzle or they're going to be active in some other way, again, uh, uh, in order to stimulate thinking and brain activity, um, I would think that's uh, also important. Yeah, definitely. Cognitive engagement, finding something that you like to do and having it be challenging because your brain likes new and challenging things to do. So you don't want to just do what you enjoy all the time. You want to set aside 20 minutes a day to really make your brain sweat or to make it feel like smoke's coming out of your ears. Do that harder crossword puzzle, that harder Sudoku, whatever it is. You want to really push your brain for that cognitive engagement piece to really have your brain um, benefit the most from it. Now, we know what a big deal on the sports doctor is a gigantic deal. We talk about nutrition in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. How much attention, Leanne, um, are you including the uh, 
paying attention to the whole side of nutrition with uh, brain health? Yeah, uh, you know, it's probably the next to the physical activity, the most uh, studied scientifically. And we know sugar is not good for our brains. So reducing added sugars in your diet, uh, reducing the processed foods, anything that comes in a box or a package, the more natural foods that we can get to, the whole foods are much better for our brain. You know, read the labels. If there's things on there you can't pronounce, It's a processed food, and your brain doesn't deal with that well. So I think, you know, diet and physical activity are probably the two biggest things that we have control over and can start to make small changes that make a big difference. You know, yes, the the, uh, idea also of hydration. Uh, You know, we see uh, lots of concerns. You know, dementia is a huge topic. Yeah. Alzheimer's, huge topic. Yeah. So much attention being paid to the mental side of aging, as well as we're paying big attention uh, in, in preventing falling in the whole physical side right. of, uh, uh, again, in the, in the uh, aging uh, you know, population. So yeah, it, it and hy- seems- hy- hydration is so often overlooked, and it's so important, especially as we get older. We may not feel thirsty, and we need to make... Um, make a conscious effort to know that we're drinking enough water throughout the day. What's the real important website, Leanne? What's this website people could find out about uh, the, uh, the health center, the brain health center? Um, virtualbrainhealthcenter.com. So it's all in the name, virtualbrainhealthcenter.com. Okay. With you, again, your background is a registered nurse, the background in pediatrics, as well as with seniors. And your your colleague, uh, Dr. Culler, um, what was what's her background? Uh, she is more in the gerontology and psychology background. Uh, she has a, a PhD, and we work really well together because she has the more research and scientific background, and I have the more practical, hands-on kind of side. So we work really, really well together. She's the great visionary, and I'm the nuts and bolts person that puts everything <laughs> into practice. Right. So we, we complement each other really, really well. And again, the, uh, uh, the senior community, I would imagine, you know, with the uh, assisted living and, uh, you know, the other uh, different types of communities, um, uh, where do you really see your main uh, focus? Is it on individual online education? Is it it's speaking to groups? Um, we, uh, do you we, have classes uh, with the, uh, the health center? What's, the, yeah, what, what, what's going on? Yeah, we offer uh, classes on our website for individuals or groups. They're free. Um, we also uh, work with community groups. Um, insurance plans, uh, senior living facilities to do um, contracted work with them to bring them monthly brain health programs, things like that. Uh, we can work with anybody. So we have talked to schools. We could talk to employee wellness programs. We can adjust our brain health message to any audience. So we can talk to anybody yeah, because brain health is for everybody. The, you ought to pay, yeah, I think you ought to pay attention to the uh, 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 to uh, uh, the uh, young kids and the right? school systems where we see again the the idea of paying attention um, to this this whole topic of uh, healthy, active lifestyles. Twenty five years ago, I was on the radio ranting and raving against them stopping PE in schools. Yeah. Yeah, dealing there because of the, that that was that kind of pressure, getting away from uh, the idea of paying attention uh, uh, with these uh, not only again with the seniors but when you're talking about the uh, elementary school and junior high school uh, where uh, it should really be part of their uh, health uh, classes and health education. Uh, right. You would think um, as far as their uh, lifestyle is concerned. Have you had any feedback from the the world of the Good luck to you, the school system. <laughs> no, you know, that's probably been the group that we have touched the least so far. Again, 
We started our center at the beginning of the pandemic, so we may see that change. You know, schools were closed for so long, and I think a lot of schools are just still catching up. Well, you'll um, never run out of baby boomers, that's for sure. And again, that's the, true. Uh, it's, it's so, so challenging uh, where we had, uh, I, I had a very popular article I wrote about that uh, pickleball is physical, you know, with the explosion of pickleball, with mm-hmm. all these seniors getting to uh, uh, looking to try to get active and not realizing that it's a physical game. <laughs> we would see one injury after the other. Yeah. Uh, but you got that the population of, again, trying to stay healthy longer, um, trying to be active. And I guess everything you do puts you in the middle of the whole family unit, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we can work with right anybody. in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, the whole pickleball idea, that's a real social event, too. And that's another thing that's really good for our brains. We need to have those social connections. We need to have conversations with other people. So all of our programs that we offer are live on Zoom and interactive. So people can talk to each other. They can talk to us. And Great. we think that's well, a really come important back. We'll part. Talk. We'll talk. We'll, we'll pick it up where we leave it off. We're okay. Gonna, we'll take a break. Everybody, it is the sports doctor. We're talking to Leanne Stuber, uh, who is the director of lifelong learning at Virtual Brain Health Center. And we will be right back. It's the sports doctor. Everybody, welcome back. Live from Chicago, it's the sports doctor. We are talking with Leanne Stuber. A uh, long time uh, a registered nurse. She's the director of the Lifelong Learning at the Virtual Brain Health Center. We were talking before the break, Leanne, about uh, some of the different programs uh, that you offer. Uh, and uh, maybe you could pick up at that. Uh, what are some of the different programs that you offer, whether it's for groups, organizations, individuals, uh, with the Brain Health Center? Sure. So every month uh, on our website, we offer some movement classes that are free to individuals. We have um, chair yoga classes. We have a chair fitness class. We have a gentle yoga program that, you know, can be done on the floor or in the chair. Um, So those we do every month. We have instructors that are with us every month that people are free to register. They're free for people to register and they're live and they're interactive. So they're not recorded. Um, we occasionally do some of our cognitive engagement classes. Normally we save those for our special event days. For example, tomorrow is mental health action day and we have three classes, um, during the day tomorrow and I'm teaching one of the cognitive engagement classes in the afternoon about how to make our brain resilient in the, in these challenging times. So yeah, how, do we, we do, how do we do that, Leanne? Give me a, two sentences. How do we make our brain more resilient? <laughs> you know, we need to learn about those brain health factors and focus on them. And by making our brain stronger, we, tr- we train it to be more resilient. And it is trainable. It is, we well, are able to change major, our brain. It's a major point. When we, we featured sports psychology in the mental game for decades on the sports doctor. And one of the big points, again, I use three words, which is number one, awareness, number two, education, number three, positive action. The awareness factor that you can train. Mm-hmm. You know, this became a big deal in sports medicine that you could really train mentally with right. visualization, with some of these other skills. So I would imagine that still there's a, quite a bit of awareness to catch up on as far as uh, uh, individuals understanding uh, that that these things um, can really be helpful. Right. And, you know, athletes for years have learned how to um, focus, whether it's through meditation, through breathing, um, and all of us can learn to do that. It's not just for elite athletes. We all can learn to calm our brain down, get that focus, um, learn new habits. I mean, habits are hard, and that's another good point about kids. If we can build these brain health habits in kids, we're going to have healthier adults in the long run. So um, adults can change their habits, but we have to work harder at it. If we can get the kids to do it from the get-go, then we'll be a lot better off in the long run. 
Well, I think when uh, there's this kind of attention, uh, like there is to, you know, so many other areas of the body in a, in a different way, again, you're not really talking about the physical brain per se. You're talking about everything from attitude uh, to uh, feelings uh, to all sorts of different aspects of uh, brain health, you know, starting with, like you said, being able to live active and vibrant lives has a lot to do with paying attention to these factors. Um, and the uh, educational side, you know, again, whether it's uh, to um, online uh, with, uh, you know, boomers sometimes are a tough sell. What do you think, Leanne? <laughs> you know, I, I don't think they are a, a hard Good sell. Enough. I'm uh, so glad w- to hear that. W- yeah, we have, we have some wonderful people who return to our center for things, and they're always looking for new resources. We have resource pages on our website to direct you to other people other than us um, to share resources. Uh, we also have infographics on our website that we break down the science into things you can understand because a lot of times we see a scientific study or a post and it doesn't make sense to the lay person. And we so translate. Are the, are the um, assisted, let's call you nursing homes on the left, mm-hmm. assisted living, which is a gigantic area, assisted living, have they uh, been tuning in uh, to what you're talking about? Seems like they really, really have. Um, uh, have they? What's your thoughts on that? On how the these these communities are are uh, taking advantage of programs like yours? Well, you know, I, I, they haven't taken advantage of ours as much as we had hoped they were going to. But I think that is some of the result of the pandemic with staffing oh, yeah, issues. Wait till, wait, and, wait till you sell them the replay. Of the, wait till you send them the replay of this show, Leanne. Yeah, and, yeah, they should be. Uh, and I think they are in some way, shape, or form. But um, I, I think there's a lot more they could be doing to get their um, residents and, and clients that live or participate on their communities um, a lot more focused on the brain health. Um, well, I, again, you got a great title, you know, the, uh, the, the virtual brain health. I think it hits home as far as a title of what you're talking about, especially when you're talking about all of these different aspects of uh, these, these relationships and people's lifestyles and their, uh, whether it's uh, physically and or mentally. Right. You know? And because and, we're uh, virtual, we've reached people around the world, which we did not expect. So that's also a, a really great aspect of the virtual yeah, If there ever concept. was a silver lining uh, uh, to the pandemic and the uh, uh, horrendous experience for all of us, it was this uh, interconnect, whether it was telemedicine, whether yes. it was Zoom, whether it was yes. the ability of all of these groups uh, to uh, uh, interact seemed to be uh, uh, helpful. And again, you you know, you probably then you could teach your seniors also how they can, number one, stay out of trouble and number two, thrive with social media, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, there are good points to social media, (laughs) you know, and it definitely is. You you get a memory, you know, I got a memory. There I was in the the, the tent with my grandson 10 years ago. There's a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great educational stuff. Uh, Unfortunately, there are the other sides of the challenge. Yeah, you uh, just to, you just to have to least. you have to be educated to know uh, you know to avoid the pitfalls. I guess would be the best way to put that. Yes, you know, and again, I think that the uh, the educational community, the uh, park district community, the medical community should really be tuning into the importance of including the category of brain health and everything you're talking about into the organization. And you gave some great examples, whether you have somebody teaches a yoga class, a soft yoga class, maybe they have a lightweight training class, maybe you have the sports doctor talking to them about what's the best shoe uh, for right. their walking activities. Yeah. We'll throw yeah. that out to you. In yeah, order meditation. To be able to, uh, educate these groups. Yep, we also do a monthly meditation class. So um, trying to teach people, believe me, I'm a work in progress for meditation. I don't find it, it doesn't come easy to me, but I'm trying to learn it and trying to be better at it. Very, yes, very, very powerful, and and I I think the acceptance of these things, you know, if you get someone to spend a few minutes a day to just turn off, right, and uh, how healthy it is, um, and it's easy to think you're not doing it right, and, you know, the uh, I was a tough soul, too, 
uh, and and uh, but I now I find it as a routine part of what what's important. So many yeah. different things. Leanne, give us the the site again. Uh, people can find out about uh, you and your great work. Yeah, it's virtualbrainhealthcenter.com. Virtualbrainhealthcenter.com. Yep. Uh, Leanne Stuver, who is the director of the lifelong learning at the center. Thanks so much, Leanne. Um, we'll definitely have you back. Hold on. It's Thanks, Dr. Doctor, Bob. Everybody, we'll be right back. If you live in or near Aurora, Illinois, and you're into sports, fitness at any level, or your son and daughter is, you cannot forget about your feet. Your feet affect everywhere else. There are complex motions that come into play, especially in sports. Your ankles, knees, hips, and back all are affected with your foot mechanics. Uh, Come visit the office, uh, Dr. Bob, uh, and get evaluated. Uh, Check what shoes are best for you. I offer prescription orthotics, which is usually one of the major tools for treatment and prevention of foot-related ankle and leg problems. Also, enhancing performance. Step or two quicker. Call 630-898-3505 or go to sportsdoctorradio.com. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Hey everybody, welcome back. Live from Chicago, it's the Sports Doctor and the Sports Doctor is in segment where we preview some upcoming guests. We add a little Bob Guy to Wisdom. We answer a few emails. Uh, next week, uh, the fellow inductee in the National Fitness Hall of Fame, um, Bill Crawford, longtime uh, personal trainer, was just awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award with the National Fitness Hall of Fame down there in uh, Scottsdale. He will be returning. And then uh, Signe Ranka, former uh, champion figure skater, and she is the publisher of Figure Skating Fitness Magazine. Uh, that's going to be a great show. The following week, we're going to talk massage, massage therapy, soft tissue therapy with Diane Chirico. And then we're going to catch up with Hillary Loftus and the um, uh, Help Our, uh, Our Warrior Foundation and specifically the How Foundation for Young Athletes and that whole hyperbaric oxygen um, method. Great shows coming up. You know, Bob Guida made such a big deal out of rubber band resistance, the surgical tubing, which even before him, when we had Jack Lane, was big into surgical tubing. And uh, uh, Guida uh, made a real habit out of um, making rubber bands available for upper extremity, lower extremity, foot ankle was a real big deal. And the um, uh, criteria that rubber bands brought to the table, not only did you need the strength to stretch the band, you needed the control to hold. It was like holding a dumbbell, free weight. You needed the strength to hold your uh, uh, joint position as well as the eccentric to bring the band back uh, also. So it brought a whole different dynamic to training some of these systems real, real easily. You could use rubber bands and, and strengthen the feet and ankles of the best athletes in the world or their grandmothers. So just very, very versatile. It does take proper technique. And again, we tell every young athlete, all athletes, to include uh, foot ankle strengthening. Rubber bands a great way. Any physical therapist, athletic trainer could really show you a great home uh, program. It's still the most commonly injured area a few emails tom says my 12 year old daughter the serious dancer she does lots of different dancing she wears orthotics in her sneakers they're much too big too bulky can they be used in dance shoes yes they can just like an orthotic in a figure skate tom 
or an orthotic in a racing shoe, it needs to be small enough, thin enough to fit. And there might be flexible dancing shoes where any type of orthotic might not be feasible, although we have a prescription device made out of flexible materials that many times can be used in a um, shoe with no shank. But in in dance uh, like jazz, uh, let alone hip hop, uh, as as well as modern dance, many times we can uh, fabricate an orthotic absolutely that will be usable. I had orthotics and three-inch heels and dancing with the uh, with the stars back when Lysacek was in the contest after he won the Olympics uh, that were Velcroed in and color coded. So check that out. Um, we we don't expect the device and sneakers to work in a dance shoe. They're much much too bulky. Uh, uh, Bill says my 14-year-old son is a pretty serious tennis player. He's been plagued with shin splints. What do you think? You know, Bill, pay attention to foot mechanics. Number one. First, get a diagnosis. Shin splints is not a medical term. Could be a stress fracture. Could be a muscle inflammation, a tendonitis. You need a diagnosis uh, with a uh, physician, ideally an orthopedic surgeon, uh, also podiatry. Um, If you've been that route, and yet, again, though, the inside of the lower legs, consistent problem in a running, jumping sport like tennis, uh, very, very often there is, Uh, the pronated foot as a very big part of the problem. 80% of persistent shin splints are foot related. So the proper shoe orthotics can be magic, Bill, for your your son. So check that out. You know, does he have high arches? Does he have flat feet? And uh, and included with all the therapy that he might be doing, as well as the strengthening, um, if his feet don't hurt, often... It's ignored. Pay attention. Dana says, high heels. I read your article. Thought it was great. The challenge of high heels, some of your recommendations. You know, Dana, it definitely is something that um, uh, we've talked about for a long time where women uh, who might be jamming their feet in heels and putting all sorts of excessive pressure on the ball of the foot, as well as their toes, if they've got corns or calluses or bunions, can really be aggravating. And the fact that once you get into an inch and a half, two inch and higher, you're changing the whole mechanics of the body with heels, the posture, the low back, the knees. So we want women to alternate the heel height if they are in heels and to consider some exercises and strengthening, whether it's core work to strengthen your low back and your abdomen area. Uh, foot ankle strengthening can be uh, extremely helpful, uh, again, to stay out of problems and to do some alter, uh, alteration and to try to pay attention, again, to that toe room, especially if you've got a history of uh, problems, uh, because so many dress shoes with heels jam the ball of the foot with getting those toes on top of each other. It could be a problem. Uh, again, you can check the book out, hashtag Hey Sports Parents. There is still an epidemic, overuse injuries in youth sports, both physically and mentally. It's on Amazon, hashtag Hey Sports Parents. See you next week, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>